Does 30 meters of water resistance mean 30 meters? That's a common question and something that people argue about all the time. Today we're gonna to answer that. We're gonna take this thing, we're gonna drop it into this pressure tank right here. I'm gonna throw the Apple Watch Ultra in to tell me my depth as it gets increased pressure, and we're gonna see how it does. So getting them oriented so that everyone can see them was a pain. So uh, we have them in there, we have it going. This is telling us our depth in meters. This also tells us our depth in meters as we come up. So if you watch this thing right here, when this gauge hits one, that's 10 meters. Two is 20 meters, 30 meters, 40, 50, 60 meters. And so this will obviously reflect the same thing here, but I wanna give it as a reference so that you know that this is also accurate on the Apple Watch in case we have to go beyond uh, the 60 meters that's here or beyond the Apple Watch's supposed dive resistance. So as I come down, so at 10 meters or 10.6 meters here, you're at least a three-story building below the water's surface. So obviously people have fear of heights being three stories up. Three stories below the water's surface is a decent amount of depth and the water, the watch is obviously functioning just fine. So as you ratchet it up here, I wanna go to an open water divers certification. So at 18 meters, the watch is functioning quite well. Uh, I don't have any issues. It's still ticking away just fine. Um, I don't really see anything wrong. The LCD screen doesn't have any like compression where it's starting to dip in or anything like that. The watch seems to be functioning really, t really well. I'm actually a little bit beyond my functional rating, but 60 feet is six stories below the water's surface. And that's what most people, recreational divers will stop at. Uh, but we're gonna ratchet it up here. We're gonna go to an advanced certification. All right, so we're about 30 meters, and that's gonna be roughly about 100 feet, so you're 10 stories below the water's surface at this point. You're really, at this point, topped out on advanced certification diving for the most part. There are some differences there. Uh, some people have different technical abilities. They can go 50 meters versus 40 meters, but for most people, in advanced certification, this is where they're gonna stop, at 10 stories below the water surface. Right here, this is what the watch is certified for, 30 meters, and yet it's obviously still functioning just fine. I don't have any water infiltration, that obviously that I can see. Um, but you would expect if it's supposed to be splash proof that at this point it would be imploding under the water. So we'll keep going. We're just shy of 40 meters. If you didn't see earlier, when I put it beyond 40 meters, the watch itself starts vibrating and says beyond 40 meters, basically you need to stop. And the watch itself is rated for 100 meters, so it should be able to go 100 meters down, but it says that <laughs> the Casio just beeped on the hour mark. It's at 40 meters depth, which is about 130 feet down, and it just beeped at me to tell me that, hey, it's 11 o'clock. I would imagine that means the watch is functioning quite well. The speaker is still functioning. Uh, obviously, it's still ticking away on the time itself. The problem is if I go beyond 40 meters with the Apple Watch Ultra in there, it's gonna start vibrating and it's gonna move things around and then you can't see what's going on. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take the Apple Watch Ultra out. I'm gonna put the Casio back in. You can see right here that the gauge on the actual reader is correct in terms of how it matches with the Ultra. So you know that the gauge isn't wrong. So when I go beyond 40 meters and I just have the Casio in there, you know that it's functioning as it's supposed to, that this isn't lying to you essentially, or I'm not lying to you. This, the Casio is a 30 meter water resistant watch and yet, So obviously it's functioning pretty well. Uh, I don't really have any complaints. I mean, the watch seems to be functioning fine. It still beeps, the speaker still works, all the buttons still work, all the functions seem to work, the timer works, the alarm works. I can set the time. So again, the watch, obviously it beeped underwater so it, it, can, it can handle what it's rated for. That's kind of my point. This watch right here has three pushers on it, nothing screwed down. It's a digital watch. And yet when it says 30 meters, it means 30 meters. Uh, and by ISO specifications, which I'm gonna show right now, they have to meet that. So when a watch says it's rated for a certain depth, it has to meet that. So why, I guess, as I start to load this up, do manufacturers then suggest a lower resistance? When they say 30 meters, why do they say, well, it's not really 30 meters? And the reason why is because frankly, they don't trust people. If you say 100 meters and you keep the watch for 15 years, let's say, you never replace the gaskets, you never even give it a service, it's probably not gonna be rated for the same depth rating because those gaskets are silicone, they're rubber, and so they degrade over time. And so that means that now it's not at the same water resistance. Plus, 
They don't want to have to replace a watch for saying that it did something it doesn't do now. So the recommendations are far less than what they're actually capable of. They say splash proof, but this thing can handle a lot more than that. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna crank it up to 60 meters and we'll see exactly how the Casio functions and if I can kill it. And then once we hit 60, we'll see if I have to keep going even though I can't see it on the gauge and see at what point can I destroy this thing. So we'll find out. I'm at 60 meters depth right now and that's about 200 feet. So that's 20 stories below the water's surface. That's pretty impressive. Now my gauge is maxed out. I can't go any further. And so what that means is I'm gonna basically just keep adding pressure uh, and see what happens. Each time I pull that lever down, it looks like I'm about two meters of depth. So I basically have 20 more of these pulls I can do. This tank here is rated for 100 meters and I would prefer to not have shatter in my face. Uh, so we'll see what happens as I go a little deeper. I'm at 60 now, so one pull here. Puts me at 62. Now, I don't know if it's just my perspective, but I think that the LCD screen is starting to dip in. And so it's putting pressure on the actual uh, LCD back there. And so it's causing the numbers from my field of view to look like they're distorting a little bit. Um, but I'm not entirely sure if that's correct. But either way, I'm supposed to be at 70. Honestly, I've lost track of how many I put into this thing. Uh, I've been doing this for a little while. It's getting really hard to pull that down. If you look at the watch though, you can see right in the center of the screen that the LCD has distorted to the point where it's touching the back there. And you can see that center there, you've got a black dot now where it's distorting too much. Um, obviously, I don't have any actual water infiltration into the movement yet because it's still actually functioning. Um, so I'm gonna keep going. Uh, hopefully it doesn't break. Uh, I want to get the watch to break before the tank does, but we'll see what happens. All right, so I'm gonna pause real quick. Uh, the watch. I'm still going. Uh, I haven't put it, I don't know where I'm at, uh, 100 meters probably, somewhere around there, maybe more. Um, the watch itself, the center of the screen on the LCD is distorted heavily now. Uh, so I've got a big cave in, and I'll be interested to see what it looks like when I pull it out. Um, it's spreading across to the right. All the numbers are starting to get a lot lighter, so I can't see what's happening with them. Um, the watch is still functioning though. It's still ticking away. Uh, so I'm gonna keep going, I guess, and see what happens. All right, so I did it. I broke the watch. And uh, I have no idea what depth it was at, but This like depth release valve doesn't even work anymore to try and get all the pressure out, but I have to obviously get the pressure out. So, whew. <laughs> Look at all that water vapor. It's so highly pressurized. Jesus. Yeah, the water's definitely heated up again. So little did I know the camera timed out uh, while I was showing all this stuff. So when the watch came out, uh, the LCD screen here was busted. I actually took the case back off uh, and I saw that the movement itself is bone dry. I mean, there's absolutely no water in there. This light here still functions. So on the front, the light functions. This right here is the timer. So what that means is, 
this watch is still functioning. I mean, the stopwatch still works. I can actually see the numbers on the side kind of scrolling as the timer starts going. Uh, the actual noise, the, the beeping works as well. I took the case back off and when I did, it stopped beeping at that point. But when I first took it out of the water, it was still beeping. I could switch modes and see all of those different modes. Um, the hard part is the LCD screen. That's what's actually busted. I mean, it's, it's destroyed to the point where you can't see anything that's going on anymore. But that's really impressive, at least in my opinion, for a $30, 30 meter water resistant rated watch. All watches are now certified, modern watches are all certified under 22810. And that means that it has to meet its water resistance rating. It allows manufacturers to basically test it however they want. Uh, they can pick how they test it or how many they test. But when they put a printing on the dial, it needs to mean it. Uh, obviously check your gaskets over time. But what that means is that uh, this whole conversation about 30 meters being not splash proof is obviously not true on a modern watch. Vintage stuff, that's a whole other ball game. Uh, you really need to know and, and check with your watchmaker. But either way, I thought it was interesting and I thought we would see what happens to this Casio and kind of put this conversation about water resistance hopefully to bed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.